Okay. So, so, welcome to my presentation, everyone. It's supposed to be about FAMSCO and its possible transition to FOSCO or some similar thing. Uh, well, my name is Jiří Eichmann. I'm still the chair of FAMSCO, even though, like, uh, yeah, I'm not really proud of that. I'd really love to hand that over to someone else really, really soon. So, and and why? Yeah, the fact is that the, the FAMSCO, FAMSCO is uh, dead nowadays. Like, I still feel some responsibility, so I'm trying to maintain uh, some level of activity. So if we have, we have any request, on any problems to solve, I'm trying to like respond and stuff like that. But the the FAMSCO itself is not active; has not been active for several months already. Like with <coughs> all the people in FAMSCO have been serving uh, in the body for like at least me for the last three and a half years, and with the other guys, it's quite similar. And I I I feel that. Most of us are kind of burnt out from that. So uh, even if we decide to to keep FAMSCO, we will definitely need a lot of lot of new blood. I don't think there will be a lot of people from the current FAMSCO that would run for uh, <coughs> for uh, for it again if we have any elections, like. No, during <coughs> at the beginning of the talk, I'd like to start with uh, the task of FAMSCO, what FAMSCO is, is doing now, nowadays. So if we have any, any new body, what are the, the tasks that the, tasks the, uh, the new body would have to take over? Uh, so it's... it's uh, far from I hate the auto corrections in, in LibreOffice. So it should be capital A, but whatever. Uh, so FAMSCO is F Federal Ambassador Steering Committee, so it should steer the ambassador's project to, to uh, look at it. Uh, it's a big picture, solve like direct the, uh, the sub project and so on. Uh, it didn't really work that way uh, before when I joined FAMSCO. I'm going to talk about it a bit later on the slide. Uh, where I'm going to talk about what has changed in the last two or three years. It's a little bit the leadership versus governance thing there, right? Where it seemed like it's just that kind of a leadership thing, steering the project. Yeah. The thing is that uh, when I joined FAMSCO, it was pretty much like uh, we did uh, mostly day to day business. Like we app we had to approve pretty much every single uh, expense ambassadors did. If someone wanted to buy uh, or produce some swag for $50, FAMSCO had to vote about it and approve it. So that's something we have changed. But yeah, they, it should be the, uh, the leadership of the, uh, the fund ambassadors project. Uh, well, it, in the last couple of years, it has also t t taken care of the original support budget. So they, every year we get, we get ma money from our heads from ourselves and we uh, uh, manage, <coughs> we are trying to uh, spread it in, in the regions and, s and spend it wisely. So even though we have moved most of these two regions, FAMSCO is still the, still the body that is responsible for that and oversees that. Then we are also responsible for members. Yeah. So, and so the budget right now is 100% of that as it's delegated to the region. If they just split up each of the regions, so that's what it Yes. Right yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, we wanted to keep uh, like a portion of that uh, budget for some kind of like global initiatives or something like that. And it did never really worked out, or we didn't really have any like global initiatives. It was always if we wanted to do something, like the regions just took it and they allocated some of their budget to to make it happen in their regions. 
Uh, yeah, we also uh, take care of the, the membership ad administration that also involves the mentorship program that the, we have a group of mentors that uh, make sure that these people that become ambassadors are uh, capable of doing that and know enough about the project and so on. So we <coughs> we still approve like new uh, mentors. Uh, we also I thank to uh, set the rules uh, or at least guide the mentors how uh, <coughs> what the new ambassador should should know and what should be uh, his or her profile. We also so solve escalations if we have if there are any problems in uh, uh, in regions and some conflicts that can always be raised to uh, to FAMSCO. Uh, fortunately we have we haven't had such an issue for for a long time. Uh, we also review events so uh, if one of the agents want to organize Federal Activity Day or for example FAT APEC or Light them. They always go first to FAMSCO, and if if FAMSCO likes uh, the bid, uh, like the choice of the region, and approves it, then they go to. I suppose it's it's you, Matthew, right about now. Sorry, no, I was distracted. By you. <laughs> <laughs> Like who who uh, uh, gives the final approval for FATCONS? Uh, so yeah, uh, we are basically moving that from being just me to being the council. At large. Okay, uh, so now it's it's the council. But yeah, uh, historically, FAMSCO always approved that. So they they review the uh, the bid, and if it was okay, then we just uh, forward it it to uh, yeah FLP or now the council. And FOPSCO also served as a coordination between between agents. Uh, so there it was a place where we discussed uh, all kinds of activities and so that we can coordinate things globally. Uh, and it did to work pretty well. Uh, even uh, actually when, for example, one uh, agent didn't have a representative in FAMSCO, there was also always a bit of disconnection between the other, uh, like other regions and that region. So it definitely, this is uh, definitely an important uh, function of FAMSCO uh, to people from all regions can talk to each other or at least the representatives. And it's also, we are also trying to enable the, the co collaboration with the rest of the project. If Sometimes it works better, sometimes a bit worse. So what has changed in, in uh, FAMSCO in the last uh, two years, pretty much since I joined FAMSCO uh, in 2012? So we, we created a new uh, system for, for budgeting. As I said uh, before that, uh, every single uh, expense had to be approved by uh, FAMSCO, so we were busy just by just approving the uh, <coughs> the tickets. We didn't have enough time for like the uh, <coughs> more important uh, <coughs> debates and like steering the, the sub-project. So we moved pretty much all this to the regions closer to contributors. And I, I must say it has worked pretty well, like all the, all the regions uh, have picked up that task like pretty well. Where at the beginning we set up some, some general rules, some boundaries, like for example limits, like if, the, if there is an expense over $2,000, it still needs to go to uh, FAMSCO, but otherwise it's all in the hands of, of the regions. And we just make sure that uh, the, the, the money or the, the rules are set uh, wisely and work. Uh, so now, nowadays the, it's the regions that uh, plan events and activities, uh, at least in, in EMEA and APEC we organize federal activity days uh, like in December when we plan 
uh, activities and events for the next year and it's always the base for the budget so then the region creates the budget and us uh, sends it to FAMSCO and then FAMSCO puts it together as one budget proposal and sends it to, well, historically it was always OSAS if it's going to go through the council uh, from now on, then it's <coughs> council. Uh, and we also uh, created a clear criteria to remove inactive ambassadors, like put it's not really a remove it but there, it was a, like a long and um, uh, heated discussion over that uh, and it, apparently it's a very sensitive topic for for many people like ambassadors complain for years that we don't really have any any process how to remove inactive ambassadors and then there are countries that have for example 10 or 15 ambassadors and maybe two uh, out of them are active and it then it's confusing for for users or contributors when they want to uh, contact an ambassador from that country and they then try they try five ambassadors and none of them responds because he didn't pick one of those two so we wanted to find a way how to clear the list of ambassadors on the other hand there was a big pushback on removing ambassadors completely from uh, from the group of ambassadors so then we uh, came to a consensus that we don't really remove ambassadors completely from uh, from a group there, there was also like a philosophical question if uh, the the status of federal ambassador is for a lifetime so once you get it you you have it forever or if it's uh, if it has some conditions and you need to be active and do something to uh, have the status of uh, ambassador. In the in the end, we decided that it's the consensus is that it's, it's for it's for lifetime. On the other hand, to to clear the list of ambassadors, uh, we uh, set a criteria, and if the the ambassador doesn't uh, meet them, then we uh, flag him as inactive, and he is removed from the list. On the other hand, he's still in the group. And whenever uh, he or she feels uh, that he wants to contribute again, then they just need to go to fast account and uh, switch the flag back to to active. It well actually it, uh, we managed to clear the list quite a bit. Uh, I think you're setting their fast account to an active, or you're just marking it in some way. I think the, the FAS account is marked as inactive, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe, well, I mean, it sounds like you solved this already, but Apache gets around this by having an emeritus thing rather than saying inactive. You basically just say, like, if you have reached a point where you just don't have time to contribute, you know, we want to recognize that you have yeah. your merit, you have merit and all this stuff, but we're going to... There was... There was a big pushback. A lot, a lot. Yeah. No, no, you, you, you earned, like, basically all you had to do was to do Apache and build our PC and say, you know, look, I just don't have time to contribute anymore. You can, you can follow that. And really all you have to do is go back and say, hey, like, my day job now gives me more time to do this. I'd like to. And it's pretty much just a, you know, consensus. Of the party to consensus. Like, yeah, let's bring that back. That's cool. Oh. Yeah, the, the, a lot of people argue that it's certainly difficult to measure the activity of federal ambassadors. Someone doesn't have to be active on mailing lists. So if you, for example, if you are from a different country, you know nothing about his activity, but he still could be active locally, like organizing local events, just not reporting about them and stuff. So. Yeah, the, the consensus was that, uh, that it's really hard to measure the activity of federal ambassadors, so we, uh, we can't really judge that. Uh, so we don't really want to remove them like really completely. The, the, the main issue were with, with people that just disappear without saying a word. We just needed to get rid of them. But yeah, 
people argue that it's uh, it's not fact to remove them like completely from the group. So the consensus is that we they are still in the group, but they are not publicly visible for. So it pretty much solves the original the original issue, and it's still uh, like it's okay for people that uh, we are not fine with removing uh, them completely. And we also we also wanted to have the the criteria being independent on uh, someone's decisions because historically, for example, the the Indian community just uh, made a list of inactive ambassadors, and those were like removed. I know Kushal was not extremely happy about our solution, but yeah, it was also one of the objectives people had that. They didn't really want to have this process be dependent on someone's decision. You know, if there is, for example, you know, fight or with different groups and they would like propose each other, you know, to be removed or whatever. So this is this is like pretty much independent on. Uh, I do know exactly what the the criteria are. I think it's the uh, uh, the ambassador needs to be inactive for eighteen. Yes, for eighteen months. Yeah, online activity, all right, like... It's not just ambassador activity, it's the whole activity. So it's... Yeah. It's just to remove people that are, like, not interested in Fedora at all uh, anymore. Uh, but... Let's get to POSCO, which is supposed to be a Federal Outreach Steering Committee, which was proposed by Matthew like 10 months ago. Uh, so he, he proposed it in, in FAMSCOTEC that we could actually like think about this and to have this uh, new body and may potentially replace uh, FAMSCO with it. And I actually found it a, a, a good idea because the FAMSCO has an agenda that uh, definitely goes beyond boundaries of ambassadors. For example, the, that we uh, manage the, uh, the regional support budget. That this budget is not meant just for ambassadors, but for, for historic reasons, uh, because it's mostly ambassadors who manage the budget and organize events like activities that actually have some uh, some budgets and need some uh, some funding so it was always mostly related to ambassadors and other groups didn't have uh, that much time to to care about this on the other hand we don't really want to exclude anyone else so we'd like to like be inclusive in this and uh, invite other groups in federal actually f participate in this as well so for me, it was a really good idea that this, we could create a body that can can include uh, other groups in and involve them in, in uh, the processes ambassadors have uh, been doing almost exclusively in the last couple of years. And frankly, uh, after the changes we have made, I don't think ambassadors need their own steering committee. I mean, we, we've moved so much agenda to the regions and it, really, it has really worked uh, pretty well that I think the, we've got, or the body would have capacity to uh, oversee other sub-projects as well. And shared committee would definitely support uh, collaboration. As we could see, I even in FAMSCO, uh, one, one body and like, uh, like regular meetings really help coordinating stuff and at least it worked for, for the region so I'm pretty sure it could also work for example for uh, coordination between ambassadors, marketing, design and so on. So we really like this idea. Uh, on the other hand uh, we haven't moved that far from from then, and that's when I like to start the discussion because I've got uh, a couple of open questions. So, should FOSCO be an additional body? 
like should we keep FAMSCO and then just create another body above that that would oversee ambassadors and FAMSCO and other groups like my my opinion is we shouldn't like we should have as uh, a few uh, bodies as possible in my opinion and just uh, like solving problems by creating new and new bodies is, uh, and committees is not uh, a good way to go for me at least so if we if we decide for something like fosco or whatever i think it should definitely replace famsco like uh, what should be its agenda? Uh, it should be community operations. That's what FAMSCO mostly did. Or should it be outreach activities and daily like creating metrics for uh, those activities and daily focusing on the outside? So one thing I want to add is that when I used the word outreach here originally, I was thinking of it in a very general, broad sense of just outreach to users and distributors and so on. And after that, this pointed out to me, and I agree that outreach often has a connotation of specific diversity outreach. So there may be some good reasons to avoid that name here for avoiding confusion. Um, but when I, when I talked about outreach originally, that I really just meant something, um, all the activities like the ambassadors and marketing and things that kind of go to outside of our community um, rather than things yep. that are focused on the community. Yeah, there, there was yeah, because we we have had like two or three IRC meetings about this, and the, yeah, I I could see that there were definitely different views on this. That s some people uh, understood it as yeah the outrage thing that we should really focus on the like engaging people from the outside and so on, and some some people as me. Uh, understood it as uh, like a replacement for FAMSCO mostly and uh, a body would, uh, that would take over the, uh, the current agenda of FAMSCO. Uh, yeah, so that's definitely a good topic for discussion. And also what sub-project should it oversee? Because like originally I think we meant the ambassadors, marketing, design, but then Naomi also proposed like other uh, sub projects like documentation. I think there was a pretty long list there. In my imaginary idea here is that we end up with everything that's not under FESCO under this, um, so that everything has a nice orderly place for it to connect up to. Um, not necessarily to be you know, controlled by, but just a place where it plugs into a tree rather, rather than having a disparate mesh of bubbles. It's definitely, uh, like for me, it's also a gray zone that it's definitely uh, tied to the, the product a lot. Uh, on the other hand, it's really connected to the outreach or the, like ambassadors. And so that's the product. So yeah, so yeah. Said, like Fedora yeah. itself, you could say that's part of the outreach. If that's good, then we can come and put everything in there. 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 Everything in
having holes yeah. there is a good message to have, but it's not. Maybe can adding the dots more into best code makes sense. The dots fit with marketing and that group in, uh, in sort of an internal collaboration context. Yeah, I'm on the left a user experience context here, and you talk about the ambassadors and marketing uh, touting the features that we've made into distribution. Uh, if you want to coordinate that, having good user experience, then you have your ambassadors saying, here are the awesome new things in Fedora. Yeah. And you have the marketing people pushing those features, and then you have the docs, so that once the user bites on that hook, they know how to grab it. Yeah. So that's where that, I would say, is coming in as part of that conversation. Uh, but as like a governance group, uh, my, my concern with this has been that that kind of collaboration should happen without the governance group. And it makes more sense to have individuals driving for that kind of collaboration between different groups. And then if you need to build up organizational structures to support the people that are doing that, then you do it around the way that they organically develop uh, relationships and collaboration groups. So I want to contradict that. Because in the design team, a lot of times we get told, oh, wouldn't it be awesome if we had this and this and this and this? And it's dumped on our lap. There's no direction. There's no copy. There's no, like, higher level plan to it. It's mm -hmm. just like, oh, I thought it'd be cool to print out a thousand Fedora branded socks. And there's nobody, like, at a position to say, is Fedora branded socks something that's going to help us? <laughs> Is that something that people want? Is that like, th there's no, there's no like thread or like, there's no like thesis to like, this is this larger effort we're trying to put forth <laughs> and Fedora Sock supports it because it plugs into that system. It's not, it's just like you said, organic. It's very ad hoc. And the problem that we have on the design team is we get, we see them all coming in and we're just like, well, let's see, I can make a Fedora Sock or I could work on a new website, or I could work on the product itself, what's more important, you know? Yeah. So, so you don't have any guidance to prioritize things, so. And, no one here and, and, <laughs> and like to further that point, like we get the order for Fedora socks, and we're like, well, and um, I've never heard of this person before, and like you try to find out if this, because like, sometimes they're like, I want a Fedora shirt design, and you're like, well, who, like, right, who, who's authorizing it? And a lot of times it's because someone thinks it's a good idea to have a Fedora shirt yeah. and they're not involved in an ambassador and there's no way to sort of have a bass account that it's hard to yeah. tell. This is why how I question the division between design and marketing in part because I don't generally, until I've been here for a while, I didn't know anybody in design and there's not a lot of cross communication and you would think those two groups would actually be talking a lot and that doesn't happen and the same thing with yeah, like just, I, there's there's not a, a lot of the, like I believe like there's a like design should talk, but I don't yeah it's because we do a lot of other stuff other than marketing collateral. Like can I go back one second? <laughs> one of the things um, about the idea of having individuals um, that that organic thing and individuals kind of collaborating, I think that's really good and can work really well when we have strong people in those positions. One of the things I worry about is. Uh, if you have some sort of structures there and then that person goes on to other things or is busy for that release or the structure may be vacuum obvious rather than if, if it's just people based we notice the vacuum three months later when we're like oh wait nobody did that who was doing that oh my goodness Yaroslav is doing so much work um, <laughs> for example uh, and so ha having those things a little more formalized can, I hope, help with that, even though I really see the appeal of what you're saying about not, yeah. you, you know, we, we don't want to have um, bureaucracy burdening things to the point where you've got to have, you've got to go through the bureaucracy in order to get things yeah. done. The, the other side of that concern was after you proposed it, the, the idea is very slow to get momentum. There, there weren't people standing up as active in that, in that role. There were sometimes things shouldn't be slow. Like, <laughs> yeah. you guys spend three grand on socks, 
you know, it shouldn't be a thing. <laughs> and it should, I mean, you know, if, like, people get very enthusiastic, especially, like, about stuff. And this is, like, I'm an eco-hippie, so it kind of hurts me internally. Because it's like, well, what is going to happen to this stuff in a year or 10 years? Where is it going to end up? Mm -hmm. And I understand people's enthusiasm, and I don't want to, like, shoot down their enthusiasm and make them feel bad. But at the same time, it's like... At the same time, you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> completely okay with that. It was <laughs> supposed to be a, a, a discussion. Yeah, we're going to get this solved in the next 10 minutes. Yeah. Right. So Matthew, you had brought up the connotation for your outreach. Yeah, maybe the, the answer is a little kind of twofold. One, it's a messaging body, not an outreach body. And then it becomes much clearer who needs to work with this body. And then the second piece is that gives it better definition. Because one of the things I was hearing in your definition was it's kind of a, a jungle. It's everything that's not in this other group. It's yeah. not a defined collection of things. And so you're going to wind up with a screwdriver sitting next to the knives and your forks, and the screwdriver's like, I'm bored here. Right. You're right. That was bad. Yep. Uh, so, so um, do you have more slides? Do you want to yeah, I've got one more. Okay. And well, <laughs> this is the last question. It's, uh, it was uh, meant to be for, for, for Amy, but yeah, let's, let's do it at the, begin, uh, at the end, for example. Because I've got one more slide. It was pretty much a proposal for how the, the body should be structured from, from uh, FAMSCO. Uh, actually, I came with, up with, uh, with that uh, first, and then uh, Christo Wicker had a proposal that was almost identical. So how we see it from uh, the point of view of FAMSCO, so the, FOSCO or whatever uh, it's going to be should take over the agenda of FAMSCO as is probably now uh, and then build on that like we, we really need to uh, like we can't have any vacuum after like discontinuing uh, FAMSCO because we really the, the, uh, the budget we oversee nowadays is like I don't know almost a hundred thousand dollars and we really have the the structure is pretty well designed and uh, working. 
so we can't just leave it in, in a vacuum. So uh, the new body would definitely have to take over this. And then, well, uh, we can figure out, you know, what to what to include in the in the group. Like my my proposal or my opinion is that we start we should start with ambassadors marketing and design because those three groups I think are the the obvious target for this. And then again, uh, as it goes, we can well if it makes sense to to uh, for example include another sub project because we, we feel that uh, some co coordination with them is, is necessary then we can again uh, <coughs> work on that but uh, uh, like starting with something like let's include everything that is not under fesco i think it's a, a bit too vague plan for 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 the beginning so it's really better to start with with something smaller and then add and the structure, uh, pretty much, uh, we agreed, like at least I and Christoph agreed on uh, that we should move from like completely elected body to more like appointed members, uh, something similar to the council. Because first, I really like democracy, but I don't think it's the, the best model. Like in the elections, like. People, people vote, and they, um, most of them, know very little about the candidates. I, I would phrase it this way: uh, democracy and voting are not always the same thing, and yeah. our vision for voting has not actually resulted in democracy. Yeah. So, there, like the the idea uh, with with council, uh, it moved from like elections to rather appointed uh, members that are like that are active in that area of expertise is definitely something i like so uh our our proposal was to have four representatives from uh, the regions because we fe uh, we feel that it's really necessary to keep the coordination between the regions because the regions have their own own budgets but we still need to uh make sure that they are doing the same thing from the strategic point of view. That they are not producing completely different swag that is uh, like completely out of our strategy, like, I don't know, Fedora, Sox or whatever. And uh, also we, we saw it in, in FAMSCO that if one of the regions was missing, then, then there, there was immediately a disconnection between like FAMSCO and some overall strategy and what that region was doing. So having uh, representatives from the regions is, uh, I think, pretty important. And I didn't really want to put there like representatives of federal ambassadors, like uh, regional communities of ambassadors, because I think we, we should really shift from the ambassadors only thing to more inclusive, uh, like let's say a group of contributors, so I think it should be a representative uh, of contributors in, in that region. And even if we, if we switch from uh, FAMSCO to something else, I think even the processes should be changed the way that uh, other, other contributors can participate in the decisions and expense afterwards and so on, because right now uh, it's mostly in all regions set up that just ambassadors vote and just ambassadors attend the regional meetings and stuff like that. And then we should also have the representatives from uh, other groups like design, marketing, so that we can ensure some uh, coordination with, with those groups. And then, yeah, uh, we, we could have also like one or two seats elected there. I think uh, a body or with like seven members is the, the right size. I don't know if we want to have a group that has, for example, 50 people or something like that. I still would like to keep it rather a small group, but it's it's really up to discussion. If we, inc for example, include more more groups later, then it would probably require more more members. So I think a magazine is part of the. It 
it is and it is not like No. 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 I think it's really like under the umbrella of marketing. It's yeah, not. Marketing yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty really much. Like oh, yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, like, like traditionally, you know, sports are talking about the marketing where we should be a lot closer together, like, there should be a I, I, I don't like, disagree with that. I like ambas like ambassadors should be used like we should any market we should be making stuff for ambassadors to use and vice versa. Like it, and because the ambassadors are the foot soldiers of going out there and yeah, I'm ambassadors sure. are a t pretty much a tool for for marketing. Yeah. So the people that go to they, well, it's it is <laughs> maybe yeah, not that not nicely. Name, and, but and as Will was saying about design, occasionally we get the same experience with ambassadors coming into marketing, going, "Yo, where are my materials at?" And that's pretty much their interaction with marketing. It's kind of like that's not great, you know. Um, you know, like I, a, I don't know exactly what you're looking for. B, it's great if you have a thing Tuesday. It's Monday at eleven now. Um, you know, so I mean, there's definitely some kind of we we have a lot of work. My concern with this is it seems very ambassador heavy. I know that we're transitioning from FAM to Bosco, but having four reps from ambassadors and then one from marketing and one from uh, the and one from random and then nothing specifically from docs or translators. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's Really, what I want to emphasize is that I really want to move from the ambassador's only thing to really now a lot, a lot of those activities are done really in the regions, and what I want and they are mostly done by ambassadors. But what I'd like to change is that it, it we really include other contributors as well, and then it doesn't have to be the representative of the agent doesn't have to be an ambassador. It could be a person who is mostly uh, uh, active in design or marketing and so on. But it's, yeah, it's a proposal from FarmSco. We, we, we see the problem mostly, you know, to, to solve what FarmSco or take over what FarmSco is doing. I'm pretty sure that there are definitely more stakeholders here. So. For me, like the main, like in my head, the main goal of what we're trying to create here is just to increase the communication and collaboration between these groups. Like for me, that's what whatever we come up with here, that that's the goal of like. So if, even if the groups stay a little bit apart, like whether I don't know whether a board of people from each group can do that or.
to decide things. The second one is that outreach is a little term and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And the third one is that um, the work that needs to be done is a kind of work that is a heterogeneous contribution. Right? This is mostly, there are a lot of developers in the community, and when they share their contributions amongst each other, it's a homogenous experience. It's the tools they use, it's Trap, it's Git, it's all the dev tools. Right? Whereas a contribution in design is very different, and a contribution in marketing is even different. So figuring out how to coordinate heterogeneous contributions is gonna require a bigger tent, and a different kind of strategy, and new kinds of contributors that are hybrid. And that is gonna take a new focus there's a lot of stuff that has been piled from this discussion and other discussions of marketing that ComOps is going to attempt to solve and is going to need a lot of help. So I will drop as much as I can in a lightning talk, but if you check the link in IRC, there's a wiki page where we start to lay out everybody's priorities who have come and started talking about this stuff and the issue areas we want to tackle and the things we want to do. Is that a separate group? This, the idea is, the, the fundamental thing is you don't want people to choose between building things and building communities that build things. So the same way that DevOps is instrumenting and automating and integrating, you want to do that with your community too. So you don't want someone who's developing a project to have to choose between developing it or writing the blog post that brings more people to it. So integrating into the existing Fedora infrastructure as best as you can, creating as frictionless of a system as possible, Leveraging stuff like FedMessage, which is an amazing piece of infrastructure. It creates this huge layer across the entire project of all the activity. We're just starting to analyze and figure it out, but from that, we can also publish and bring the, the two key concepts is heat and light. You wanna bring heat to the parts of the project that need development, and you wanna bring light to the stuff that's already happening so you can bring more heat to it. So I'm very interested in these things, and it's definitely something that I'm looking forward to doing more with. It's still very new, we're still figuring it out, and I'm looking forward to getting more into the clock and meeting with you guys next week. Yeah. I think we can, it's still something like, uh, the, is the last day for, can we still arrange? The open slot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Also, there was one talk canceled today, I guess. At four? At four, so if nobody wants to go anywhere else, I don't know. <laughs> I would do one with the law. Yeah, but we can, we, can, we can definitely uh, yeah, meet again. And yeah. if you didn't want to go to that one, you want to go see Dan Walsh. So, yeah. if you've never seen Dan Walsh, please. But you mean the, the last day? The last day is... Talk at the same time of being technical writers, new people, new people, not people. We're the screwdriver. We're the screwdriver.